going to illustrate how I use Cumbeam CT and the three-dimensional images that are generated with that technology as an aid in diagnosing a uh, fracture or cracked tooth. This is a uh, typical 3D small volume scan taken at 200 microns. That's the width of the minimum width of the slices. There was quite a bit of metal restoration causing some beam hardening. So the 3D part is usually not all that diagnostic. You can use it to kind of orient yourself a little bit. Uh, so, for example, we're looking at the same view here. This is the first by, second by. Uh, this is the hard palette. But in any case, uh, I, I like to go to the oblique slicing. The oblique slice allows you to move the angle of the slice in all three dimensions. So when you place the cursor over the colored semicircle, you see that it becomes a double arrow. And when you hold the left mouse button down and move the cursor back and forth, you can see in the lower right window, which is green, that's uh, color coordinator, color coded, that as you move the cursor back and forth, and you can see it also in the 3D, you are moving that slice back and forth. And, and so the same is true here in the purple. You can see in the lower left how that slice is moving back and forth between the, the scan. So now, knowing that, let's concentrate on the axial slice first. It's parallel with the floor. So I'm going to move it up and down. As I do that, I want you to concentrate on the periphery of the palatal root of this uh, second bicuspid. So I'm, um, and you can see in the 3D image where that slice is. And so here we are pretty much at the crest of bone. And now we're moving apically in the, uh, in the scan. And you can notice that there's uh, uh, bone loss all the way around the outside of the root. Because of the thing called the Nyquist theorem, you can't detect an object more than twice the width of the minimum voxel size. So that'd be 400 microns or about the width of a size 40 root canal file, and most cracks are smaller than that. If we had taken this scan at 76 microns, it's possible we could have visualized that that's about the, uh, the width of the tip of a number 15 root canal file. So now I've gone uh, to that. I want to go to the uh, uh, coronal view here, and so I'm going to blow it up for you. And again, it's color-coded purple, so I, I can change both the long axis and the, the position that the slice goes through. But again, concentrate on this palatal root as I move the slice back and forth through the scan and note the bone loss all up and down the root. You may recall that I mentioned in the lecture that cracks are full of bacteria. Oral bacteria work their way in, and that bacteria then is, if the crack extends into the root, causes uh, uh, inflammation in the peritone periodontal ligament and eventually bone loss. And even though you may not be able to see the actual crack itself in the root, you oftentimes can see the bone loss that resulted from the crack. And so again, this is the sagittal view. We're going to scroll back and forth. And this is the paddle root. Uh, and it has uh, you can see it here uh, as I'm scanning through it. The uh, uh, you can see the bone loss all up and down on the palatal root, whereas in the the buccal root it has a periapical lesion 
but we don't have bone loss. So again, uh, people say, well, can you see cracks on cone beams? And the answer is, well, maybe, depending on the width and the resolution of the cone beam. But instead of looking for the crack, uh, I tend to look for a pattern of bone loss consistent with a crack rather than uh, the crack itself.